Ryan Kelly had some stuff to say about Alabama, not necessarily Nick Saban, but Alabama. So we're going to discuss the comment that was made that people say are disrespectful towards Nick Saban and his program. And we're going to talk about the other school right down the road from the transfer portal with Auburn football and Hugh Freeze making some noise in the transfer portal. So what kind of step are they taking towards becoming a better team coming into the summer and heading into fall camp from using the transfer portal? That's what we're going to discuss today on the Coach Steve Show. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe button on the YouTube channel, follow and rate it on Apple and iTunes, leave a comment in the comment section down below, leave a five-star review on that Apple and iTunes as well. Follow at Coach underscore Steve72 on Twitter and uh, do all that good stuff. Help grow the channel, help out the algorithm. So let's get into it. People are saying that Brian Kelly came on and made a disrespectful comment about Nick Saban and Alabama. When you hear something about being disrespectful, you like to think that you're talking about the person uh, as themselves, as a person. Are you going after who they are? Are you going after one of their players? Are you going after the program personally? Are you talking crap about who they are and everything in between? And so people are saying how disrespectful the comments were. How dare Brian Kelly say anything about this? Now, as you can see, if you're watching the video version, I have an Alabama pennant behind me. I am a Nick Saban fan, which then causes me to root for Alabama. So I'm called a bandwagoner. And I'm okay, that's fine. If Nick Saban were to leave and go coach somewhere else, I would probably have the same Bennett or Pennant behind me that you can see here. So I'm a Nick Saban person, and I'm one of the first to defend most of what is said towards him or anything or to the Alabama program. And just like how everybody hates the Patriots when they were winning, everybody hates Alabama because they're winning. So every time something can be said about Alabama – about Nick Saban, it immediately comes off as disrespect. So let's hear what Brian Kelly had to say. Now, I'm not the biggest Brian Kelly person either, but we can't deny the season they had last year. We can't deny any of that. So he was at around LSU audience, some booster thing, and he came and said this. I love the environment of a college stadium. I love coming out on that field. I love beating Alabama. And then they put in parentheses, Roar and applause. So I'm going to repeat that again. I love the environment of a college stadium. I love coming out on that field. I love beating Alabama. And that's all he said. So let's start off by saying this first about the comment. It's not disrespectful because they did beat Alabama. They beat him 32 to 31. Brian Kelly, I talked about before, be careful what you wish for, because he came to LSU and he said one of the things that motivated him to come to LSU was to beat Nick Saban in Alabama because he's competitive. He wants to beat them. And because they beat him while he was at Notre Dame. So they beat them this year. All he said was, I love beating Alabama. Now, how can that be taken as disrespect? Well, you don't go after one of the best, if not the best. He is the best college football coach of all time. He's one of the best football coaches of all time. That's where people find disrespect. They find disrespect because why are you going out of your way to say those things? That's how sometimes respect is looked at or disrespect saying, why are you going out of your way to say these things? Like I said at the beginning, he didn't come out and say that Nick Saban was a bad coach. He didn't come out and say that Nick Saban can't hang with me. He didn't come out and say anything about his family. He didn't come out and say anything about the players. He didn't come out and say that I run a better program than he does. He didn't say that they have no chance. No, he did not say any of that. I don't think what he said was considered disrespect. What I think it is considered, I think it's considered foolish to say this. Because I guarantee, and Nick Saban doesn't have social media, but I'm sure somebody saw this or heard it and showed him or let him listen to it. And I guarantee you, he laughed and said, yeah, they beat us. But then he's going to use that as fuel and remember that when that week comes. That's where the foolish part comes in. Because you need to be careful on who you give bulletin board quotes to 
People are not very high on Alabama this year, and I think this is one of the first times in a very long time that people are not high on Alabama. And I think Nick Saban likes it that way. I think he wants people to slowly start not paying attention to them. They've, they still will have a huge target on their back because of what they've accomplished. But people are going to start looking at LSU because they beat Alabama. Texas A&M is going to have a target just because they have all the recruits. Georgia is definitely going to have the target after winning two national championships. But you have to be careful who you're going to give bulletin board material to. So it's not disrespect. It's foolish. Why go out of your way to say these things? You could have just said, I love college football. I love the stadium. I love the atmosphere. And I love coming out in front of LSU crowd as we go and beat teams in the SEC. I think where we sometimes get respect and just foolishness mixed around is your definition of it. It's just more foolish. Why would you give the best college football coach ever bulletin board material? There was rumor that he wanted to retire. And then when they lost, it gives him motivation to come back. Certain things will be motivating for Nick Saban. He has proven that he's the best college football coach of all time. Nobody coaching right now is better than him overall. People will say I am wrong. To me, he's still the best because of what he's accomplished. Well, we got to, people say we got to live in the present. I understand we got to live in the present. Maybe at this moment in time, another football coach out there is quote unquote doing better than him. But the overall picture, he's a better coach, especially better than the guy making these comments. So this isn't necessarily disrespect. I think it's foolish. And it's just going to add bulletin board material for him for the year. He's going to love people not looking at him as much. I think he's going to love using this motivation for his Alabama football players and say, people are not disrespecting us, but people are not paying attention to us like they used to. That should get you motivated each and every week to say, famous song, remember the name. That's the type of thing Alabama is going to use and Nick Saban's going to use. These are the type of comments that this coach is making and Brian Kelly at LSU. And I guarantee other coaches are saying in private about Alabama, especially after their quarterback situation that they're seeing now. I guarantee this is what they're seeing. So it was not disrespect. It was just more foolish. And we will see come when the college football season is here, who's going to walk off that field and who's going to be more motivated, LSU or Alabama. Let's talk about a little bit of the transfer portal here about the other school in Alabama, the Auburn Tigers. They landed a couple of transfers. The quarterback, Peyton Thorne, transferred into the or went to the transfer portal from Michigan State because his best receiver decided they didn't want to play with him. So he went to the transfer portal. Peyton Thorne then said, Well, my best receiver is leaving. I'm still at Michigan State. I don't have anybody to throw to, really. I'm entering the transfer portal. And so he goes in the transfer portal and claims that when he's healthy and he's playing the best he can be, he's a top athlete and a top quarterback. We'll see about that. But some numbers aren't bad. He did not have a good year last year. We will see. But Hugh Freeze, it's been talked about Auburn. They need a quarterback. Talked about Casey Thompson, the transfer from Nebraska, going into the transfer portal. I said, could he enter and go into Auburn? Because Auburn needs a established quarterback, maybe a little bit more veteran, so that way they could try to make some noise this year. Well, I was close. They did get a quarterback. Peyton Thorne has now transferred from Michigan State to Auburn. And it's going to come into an offense with Hugh Freeze, who knows some offense. He's coming into Auburn. So now Hugh Freeze does have a quarterback to add to his room. Not guaranteed that he's going to be the starter, but it brings some experience, some Big Ten playing experience coming into Hugh Freeze's first year. Then after they get Peyton Thorne, they add a weapon for him. They get Caleb Burton the third, the wide receiver transfer from Ohio State that left Ohio State to the transfer portal is also going to Auburn. 
So Auburn and Hugh Freeze's offense just landed two key pieces for his offense in his first year at Auburn. So that helps Hugh Freeze feel a little more comfortable as he's entering this year one. What does it mean to get a Peyton Thorne and a Caleb Burton? Well, with Caleb Burton, you're getting a playmaker. You're getting a guy that's been around speed. And with Hugh Freeze's offense, that's going to be up-tempo, multiple. And you need a guy with jet motions, bubble screens to throw it deep. This is a guy that is going to fit right well into your system. This is a guy that you can move anywhere on the field, punt returner, wide receiver, slot receiver. I think he could be just an overall player for Auburn. What does it mean to have Peyton Thorne come in? Well, some experience. Um, In 2021, which was considered his best year, 3,240 passing yards. He averaged 8.3 yards per completion. He had 27 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. His longest pass was 85 yards. He was 235 of 389 passes. Not a bad year. Last year, he battled some injuries. He had 19 touchdowns to 11 interceptions, 2,679 passing yards, 62.5 completion percentage, um, was 242 for 387 passes. So his completion percentage was better than 2021, but his yards went down, his touchdowns went down, um, and his interception went up by one. Uh, I don't think he's going to be this world beater of a quarterback. I kind of want to compare this to, we could see a match make here, comparable to a Jimmy G when he was at Eastern Illinois University. Now bear with me here. Hugh Freeze wants to run an up-tempo offense. He wants to go fast. He wants to have multiple things going on. Awesome. Now he could adapt to... A couple different things. When Coach Dino Babers got to Eastern Illinois, he was coming from Baylor as a wide receivers coach, running that Baylor offense, running choice routes, going very up tempo, snap the ball 10 to 12 seconds. He came to Eastern Illinois, who, under the legendary coach Bob Spoo, who was running more of a pro style. They would get in shotgun at times, but you saw high formation, double tight, huge big linemen. They wanted to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Jimmy G's freshman, sophomore year, they did not perform very well. You know, Babers gets there, churns it around. Now, Jimmy G is not this huge time runner. He can move. Don't get me wrong. There were some runs he had, but he had to adapt away from an RG3 type of quarterback to a Jimmy G type who could do some zone read things, could move in the pocket, but had to get the ball out of his hands quick, manage the game, do short intermediate passes, which then would open up the big playmaker passes, would get a team off balance, any type of short intermediate pass, the receivers would make a play. That's what you're going to get with a Peyton Thorne, in my opinion, with Hugh Freeze. Hugh Freeze is not going to sit there and say, well, I'm going to run Peyton Thorne during this type of offense. It's going to be a very similar situation with, I'm going to come in and do the type of offense I want to do, but we're going to adapt it to this quarterback I have where if I can get him confident throwing the football and we can get short intermediate passes, we have a Caleb Burton to, to be a decoy at times and sometimes be the guy, this could help on offense. Not saying Auburn's going to come in and – win the SEC and do all these things, but coming into year one and trying to establish this, have a guy that's played a little bit there at Michigan state played against Ohio state played against some big time opponents um, has done very well in his last games. If you want to go look at his last games um, versus Rutgers on November 12th, he had 256 passing yards versus Indiana had 298 passing yards versus Penn State had 229 yards. Now, Michigan State did not have a good year. A lot of transfers have left Michigan State, which is not a good sign because they're not getting them replaced quick enough like a Colorado is. Um, But he ended the year throwing the ball for a lot of yards. Um, Two touchdowns versus Rutgers, two touchdowns versus Indiana, one touchdown versus Penn State. Um, They struggled getting the run game. They struggled with everything else. If Auburn gets the run game going – with this up-tempo offense, it's no whole thing that Michigan that Auburn wants to do with Hugh Freeze, and he takes that Dino Babers, Jimmy G approach. I think that they could do better, and it pains me to say that about Auburn sometimes because of what I've said about Auburn in the past, but I think that's the type of thing you're going to see if Peyton Thorne wins the starting job there. This does not mean he's going to start. Now, why would he go to Auburn if he wasn't going to start? You know, we don't know. But something was said to him, same thing with Tyler Buckner, um, going to Alabama. Why would he go there to be a backup when he was going to be a backup at Notre Dame? 
Um, or does he have a better chance of finding a starting spot at Alabama and competing? Same thing with Peyton Thorne. So if this happens and he takes that Dino Babers, Jimmy G approach, maybe he could have a pretty good successful season there. Um, we will see. And he is from the same suburb that I live in. So, you know, that's a pretty cool thing. But Auburn just got a little bit better with Caleb Butt. Burton the third and Peyton Thorne, even though he's not the world beater quarterback like in college football that we're seeing, but they did just get a little bit better down there, down the street from Alabama, down at Auburn. Um, that's the short episode to talk about. Um, again, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow and rate on Apple and iTunes, leave a five star review, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Follow at Coach underscore Steve72 on Twitter and the Coach Steve Show on Twitter as well. Um, check out all the other videos. Comment down below. Check out all the affiliates, all that good stuff. Um, thank you guys again for watching and or listening. This is Coach Steve. We will see you guys next time.